tired and bring your shame bring your guilt and bring your pain don't you know that's not your name oh you will always be much more to me every day i wrestle with the voices that keep telling me i'm not right but that's all right because i hear a voice and he calls me when others say I'll never be enough And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world In the world In the world And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world Bring your doubts and bring your fears. Bring your hurt and bring your tears. There'll be no condemnation here. Oh, you are holy, righteous, and redeemed. Every time I fall, there'll be those who will call me a mistake. Well, that's okay, because I hear a voice and he calls me when others say I'll never be enough And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world In the world In the world He's greater, he's greater There'll be days I lose the battle Grace says that it doesn't matter Cause the cross already won the war I am learning to run freely Understanding just how he sees me And it makes me love him more and more He's greater, he's greater There'll be days I lose the battle Grace says that it doesn't matter Cause the cross already won the war He's greater, he's greater I am learning to run freely Understand it just how he sees me and it makes me love him more and more. He's greater, he's greater. Cause I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed. When others say I'll never be enough. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. In the world. In the world. Days I lose the battle, grace says that it doesn't matter, cause the cross already won the war. He's greater, he's greater. I am learning to run freely, understanding just how he sees me, and it makes me love him more and more. He's greater, he's greater. Than he who is living in the world. Greater. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice <clears throat> All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. 
How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see How great How great is our God In age to age He stands Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God is three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb. How great.
bells are ringing this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We pray this morning that you would just renew our minds as we meditate in your word this morning. We ask you to take every doubt and every fear and replace it with peace. Your word tells us that we can have peace. We can have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. You could replace it also with hope. And we just exalt in hope and in your glory, God. And replace it with love. And we thank you this morning, Lord, for pouring your love into our hearts. We ask that you would give us spiritual eyes to see, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. We ask that you give us spiritual ears to hear, to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying to us. Renew our minds. Renew our hearts this morning, Lord, as we meditate upon your word. We give you all the praise and all the glory for who you are, the Prince of Peace, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> the darkest hours in a man's life or a nation's life is when hope is gone, because then despair and depression take over. Death had reigned over mankind since the day in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned. Every man or woman born into this world <coughs> live and die. Death would move like a merciless steamroller over its victims. There had never been a change. Evil seemed always to win. Enemies would conquer and man could see no hope. But that changed the night Jesus was born. Personal and national hope came. As we stand here hundreds of years from that day, we can see that hope came for us then too through our Savior. With Christ, the future is not dark. There is hope. It's not emptiness awaiting the judgment but as heirs to all that God is and has, hope lights our future and dispels the darkness. God is our hope. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We light the candle that burns bright with hope. Angels sing, praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us. Joy awakening, at your feet we fall. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful.
Turn in your Bibles, though. We're going to look at Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. Just follow along as I read these verses. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice, or in some translations, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that sufferings produce perseverance, perseverance, proven uh, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not Put us to shame because God's love has poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, we're living in a time where um, I think many people are starting to feel a little bit of hopelessness. This past week um, and the week before, I started to hear more people that I know personally that have been diagnosed with COVID. One of them was my, my own sister-in-law. She's doing better, but we're hearing more and more of that. And as, as this pandemic drags on, people are beginning to lose hope. Families are stressed out. Um, businesses are struggling to stay afloat. Medical personnel are, are being worn out. I know my own daughter is in a hospital uh, working in pediatrics in San Francisco. Medical personnel is getting worn out, and, and then there's, there's this beginning of panic buying as people get worried about another lockdown. And there's a new term that's being tossed around, COVID fatigue. People have COVID fatigue. So as... The, the ongoing pandemic, this ongoing pandemic and economic uncertainty, the political unrest, has, all this has fueled, fueled this hopelessness. According to the Bible, ultimately, there's no hope without Jesus, 
Without Jesus, there's no hope. Because all mankind is lost, right? In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. And then Romans 6, 23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death. Spiritual separation from God. Hopelessness. But all that changed, right? Over 2,000 years ago at the birth of Christ. In Christ, we are given a hope that never fails. The rest of that verse, usually we don't listen to the rest of Romans 6.23, but it says this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's this eternal hope, a supernatural hope, a certain hope in Christ. And this kind of hope transforms a person's life. And it's one of the gifts of Christmas. You know, when we come to Romans chapter 5, Paul's just finished his great doctrinal statement of salvation. And you, you can put it in these words. Salvation is by grace through faith alone in Jesus Christ. Salvation is by faith, through, uh, by grace, through faith alone in Jesus Christ. So we're justified or we're declared righteous based on our faith in Jesus Christ. And then when he, he says, he tells you that in the first few chapters, right? But chapter 5, Paul describes the benefits of our justification or being saved by faith. And the first thing he says, one of the benefits is that we have peace with God. Look at verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified, made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're no longer enemies of God. We are now friends with God. We are part of God's family. We have this loving relationship with God now. And then in the first part of chapter 2, we see the second benefit of our justification. Our access into God's presence. Look at verse 2, just the first part. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace. We, have, we can enter into the presence of God. Think of the verse in Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We have access to God's presence because of our salvation by grace through faith, uh, through faith in Jesus Christ. And then the third benefit he talks about and mentions is our hope in Jesus. That's what I want to focus on this morning. Look at, look at the second part of verse 2. It says, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So we rejoice in our hope in Christ Jesus. So Paul focuses on three aspects of this hope that we have in Christ. And I'm going to talk about three of them. First, we have this glorious hope. Then we have this powerful hope. And we have a certain hope. We have a glorious hope, a powerful hope, and a certain hope. We have this glorious hope that we have as believers. Look at verse 1 and 2 again. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice or we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Excuse me. <clears throat> we rejoice or we boast in the glory, the hope of the glory of God. And this statement is actually taken better as an exhortation encouraging us to boast. So instead of seeing us and we rejoice or we boast in the glory, it's saying boast in our hope in the glory of God. Boast in it. 
We eagerly wait for the time that we're going to share in Christ's glory. And that's something that we can really get excited about. It's something that we can boast in. It's something we look forward to. The hope of being glorified. In Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30, it says this, For those who he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. I want you to notice that the number he starts with, he finishes with, right? It says, those who he predestined, right, he also called. And those he called, he justified. And those he justified, he glorified. He begins with a number, he ends with the same number. So every Christian has this hope of glory. We have this glorious hope of being in the presence of Jesus Christ and God forever. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17, we read this. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who fall asleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own words, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of our Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we are still alive and are left. We'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Now that's often read at memorial services. And it's a great comfort. We look forward to that hope of the glory of, the, of God. For everyone who knows Jesus as their Savior, we have the expectation that one day we are going to share in Christ's glory. One day we will see God in all his glory. And one day we're going to be just like Jesus. That's the hope that we have. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, And we all with unveiled faces comp contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image, ever increasing, with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We have a hope. I was reading this about a, a boy named Ban, and it says this, Ban was diagnosed with a brain tumor at age 16. Hope is the one thing, we have some feedback here, is the one thing that kept his parents, Kevin and Laura, moving forward. Hope is what kept them from giving up. And his sister, Bethany, always kept her sights on the silver lining. He went through a series of tests and a series of treatment. They discovered that the type of brain tumor that he had actually was the same one that killed his uncle. He underwent surgery. They didn't quite get all the tumor. Then he went through a variety of treatments of chemotherapy. And, but Ben never lost his sense of humor or his compassion for other people going through an ordeal. For six months, Ben went through the treatment. And then they ran more tests. In the middle of it all, he celebrated his 17th birthday. Someone gave them tickets to the Kansas City Chiefs game and, and they lived their lives together and they kept hoping. A month after his surgery, tests showed that the tumor had come back. 
Ten months after he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, Ben died. Now, for some of us, that would have been the end of our hope, but for, not for Kevin and Laura, his parents. They have a different kind of hope today. They now hope for that day when they will be reunited with Ben. That's hope. Now I was reading this other article. And it's about a woman who wrote about the passing of her dad. My mom, my sister, and I waited by my dad's bed as his breath became shallower, less, and less frequent until they were no more. Dad was a few days shy of his 89th birthday when he slipped quietly into the life beyond where God awaited him. His departure left us with a void where once he resided. Now there's only memories and mementos to remind us of him. Yet we have the hope that one day we will be reunited. We have that hope because we believe that dad is with God who knows and loves him. When dad breathed his last breath, God was there breathing breath into his lungs. Yet even before his first breath was ever breathed, in between, God had intimately been involved that whole time from the beginning when he was designed and knitted together in the womb. That's from Psalm 139. And when God breathed his last breath, God's spirit was there holding him in love and carrying him to be with him. That's the hope that she has. That's the hope that we have. Psalm 139 goes, um, in the beginning it says this, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence, God? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night will shine like the day and darkness is as light to you. And I was sharing with the worship team, I thought of this song that I learned years ago. It came right from this verse and it goes like this. Where can I go? that you are not with me. Where can I go that you are not there? If I descend to the depths of the deepest, darkest ocean, you would be there, you would be there. So where can I go? That you are not with me. Where can I go? That you are not there. This is a hope that we have. And it stands out even more when you contrast what our life would be without Christ. We were sinners. We had no hope. And we are destined only for judgment. An eternity without God. But now, by God's grace through faith in Christ, we have been given this glorious hope. And it's something that we could never imagine. You know, it's a stressful time. It's an uncertain time for many. And, and things keep changing and the rules keep changing on us. As Christians, we can face all this and all the trials that we go through and all the difficulties with this eternal hope that we have. Eternal hope. Not only do we have an eternal hope, but we have this powerful hope. Look at verse 3 and 4. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. 
perseverance, character, and character hope. We have this powerful hope. The struggles of life, the trials, the suffering can't dim that hope that we have in Christ. In fact, it only can brighten and, and deepen that hope that we have. Listen, as Christians, we're not exempt from problems and struggles. It's just a natural part of life. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good, good cheer, because I've overcome the world. Remember when I told you, it was a while back, that, that we really do young Christians a disservice. When we make it seem like when you become a Christian, you don't have any problems. Everything works out. Right? We need to prepare them and let them know that, no, you're going to go through problems just like everyone else in this world. You're going to have difficulties, struggles in life. You're going to have illness or there will be illness in your family. There's going to be problems at work. There's going to be loss of a job or difficult relationships or different misunderstandings. That's going to happen in your life. But Paul carries us a step further. He says, we actually glory in our suffering. Glory in our suffering. We can rejoice in our suffering. And I think of what James said. It's right along line, the lines of what Paul says. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Consider it a pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you can be mature, complete, lacking in nothing. Paul's not saying that we rejoice because of trials in themselves, but we rejoice because of the benefits to us of those trials. It's a matter of perspective. We rejoice in the benefits and results of the trials in our life. You know that term testing in James chapter 1? It's real interesting because it means approval. Approval. Knowing that the approval of your faith produces endurance. Trials are the test in our life and they're meant to approve us, not destroy us. Somebody needs to answer their phone. Knowing that the approval of your faith produces endurance. Paul, uh, Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 1. In all this you greatly rejoice. He was talking about suffering. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proof, the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. I thought about when, when I was ordained. I had been in the ministry five years. And uh, I was to be ordained. So I had a board that tested me. There was a seminary professor on that board. There was a, uh, the former director of the uh, Conservative Baptist Churches in Southern California. He was on that board. A pastor who mentored me from the day I started. I met him every month for five years. He was on the board. And then a senior pastor of a church that had been there for 20 years. He was on the examining board. Graduate seminary submitted my doctrinal statement uh, to them, which was 20 pages long. Had an oral exam in front of the entire church, just like this. All the members were there as I was examined. Talk about intimidating. <laughs> but all these men knew me. And they had walked through with me through five years of ministry. 
And so it came to the, the ordination. It was more an affirmation of my calling in the ministry than a test. When we go through trials, it's an affirmation of our faith so that we can rejoice in those trials. No amount of suffering is going to separate you from the love of God. Paul says that, For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor death, Nothing in all creation is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you to look at the progression of Paul as he talks about uh, suffering. He says, not only so, but we also glory in our suffering. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character... Hope. Tribulations bring perseverance or patience and endurance into your life. We learn through trials that we can stand up under them in a way that honors God. We learn the lessons that God wants to teach us through trials. Many times. Perseverance brings character. We're, we're approved through our, through our test, through our suffering. Tests are not meant to destroy us, but to approve us, approve our character. And then character brings hope. The final product is hope, a deeper, stronger hope in our life. Because we know in a deeper way that God is going to bring us through. Through Christ we have this glorious hope, we also have this powerful hope. As we go through life. It's going to carry us through every trial or suffering that we go through. And then finally we have this certain hope. Verses 5 through 8. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Who has been given to us. You see at just the right time. When we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his love towards us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, people put their hope in so many things. They put their hope in their future that tomorrow's going to be better. They put their hope in, in the lottery, winning the lottery, and being financially secure. I heard that many of those that win the lotteries are no happier after winning the lottery. They put their hope in their children that their children are going to achieve the dreams that they couldn't achieve. Couldn't achieve. They put a hope in their riches and, and, and everything that they possess. Well, you're not going to take any of that with you. But Christians place their hope in God and his promises. Because God is never going to disappoint us. Christian hope is this glad certainty regarding things yet unrealized. Let me say it again. Christian hope is this glad certainty regarding things yet unrealized. And the reason a Christian's hope will never disappoint is because it's based in the love of God. That's what that verse says. The reality of God's love poured out in our lives was demonstrated at the cross. Christ died for our sins that by believing Him and receiving Him, we might have life. God's love is the assurance of our hope. Verse 5, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Verse 8, But God demonstrates His own love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, if God loved us so much, while we were still sinners, 
how much more will he do for us now that we are children of him by faith? Think about that. Our hope's certain because it's based in God's love and that will never change because God is love. You know, this Christmas season, I want to encourage you to focus on God's gift of hope that came that first Christmas over 2,000 years ago. It's this glorious hope. We look forward to one day being with him forever. It's a powerful hope that's going to sustain us through whatever we go through, even at this time, whatever we face. God is there for us. And he uses those times to affirm us. To approve us. And then finally, it's a certain hope because it's based in God's love. You know the last part of uh, Romans chapter 8 says, What then shall we say in response to these? If God is for us, Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? All things. This Christmas, let's hold on to that hope. Hope that God's given us. And then, Let's share that hope with others around us. With others who may be struggling through this time. With others who are losing hope. With those who don't know the love of God. Let's share that with them. With those who don't know Jesus. Hang on to hope and share that hope with those around you. And that's so needed today. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. You give us just such a certain hope in you that we don't have to fear, we don't have to worry. We know that you are with us through all things, Father. Hope that can sustain us, can empower us. A hope that's as certain, as certain as your love. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be receiving our offering this morning. Before that, I'd just like to pray. We have, again, we have a bow in the front, front and the back. Um, and you can just drop it as we, as the worship team does this song. But let's pray. Father, thank you so much. You've given us so much, Father. And, and you ask us to give some of the blessings back to you for your glory and for your work. And so help us to give to your work, Father. And as we do that, Father, we are reminded that it's not just giving our gifts to you, but it's giving our entire life to you. It represents that, Father, that you might use it for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. place that you haven't been, mountains or valleys, the places within my soul, you know, there's not a moment you're not by our side, pull us from darkness to glorious light, you made a way, you go before us, lead on me. sorrow your peace cannot fill 
There is no storm that your word cannot still we rest in you. There is no power you can't overcome. There is no battle the cross has it won. Lead on, lead on, King Eternal. Lead on, lead on. We will follow your ways, your truth. Follow your life wherever you lead on, lead on, King Eternal. And let it be only for you, only for you. Take my life and let it be only for you, only for you. Need on, need on, King Eternal. Need on, need on. We will follow your ways, your truth. Follow your life wherever. stand as we close. Don't forget, uh, there's a table if you uh, would like to sign up to be a part of the angel tree uh, gifts for uh, children of those that are incarcerated. And you can uh, see that at the back. Let's close our time in prayer. Father, thank you for this morning and uh, for this first Advent as we focus on, on the hope that we have in you, Father. And help us to just carry that throughout the Christmas season, to share it with those who don't have that hope, Father. And thank you for today. We pray that you've been pleased as we come to worship and honor and praise you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go let your light shine. Your peace cannot fill. There is no storm that your word cannot still. We rest in you. There is no power you can't overcome. There is no battle your cross has in one. Lead on, lead on, King Eternal. Lead on, lead on. We will follow.
my life and let it be only for you, only for you.